Let's put the USA over the NRA. This is the start of the spring and the blossoming of our democracy. So let's take this to our local legislators and let's take this to midterm elections. To those politicians that say change will not come, I say we will not stop until every man, every woman, every child, and every American can live without fear of gun violence. And to that I say, no more. We can and we will change the world. That was Parkland, Florida shooting survivor David Hogg speaking at the March for Our Lives in Washington back in March. David's sister Lauren Hogg also survived the Valentine's Day shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, but she lost four close friends who were among the 17 killed in the tragedy. The siblings have published their first-person accounts of the shooting, and the movement sparked in its aftermath in a new book titled Never Again, A New Generation Draws the Line, the proceeds for which will be donated to charity. And David and Lauren Hogg join us now in the studio. Guys, good morning. It's good to see you both. You. It seems to me that both of you, in particular you, David, have become activists and, and political actors. And I haven't seen many people talk to you about how you're doing and how you're feeling in the wake of something that none of us could have ever had to imagine, God forbid, will ever have to imagine. How are you doing? 17 of your friends were killed and you were there. How are you feeling? Have you had time to grieve as you've been out on the road? We've had to, but we've also had to fight through it so that people don't just, my sister says this a lot, see these people as characters whenever they're on TV. Eat. The best thing that I can say to people is imagine the person that you love most, that you hold the closest, and imagine them being shot and killed. That's what all of these people were to someone and many other people. And that's what happens every day. In D.C. this year, since the beginning of the, or in Chicago this year, since the beginning of the school year, over 150 kids have now been murdered on the streets under the age of 21. And we don't hear their voices. I, oftentimes when I'm going out there and I may feel disrupted or, or just sad about what's going on, a lot of that comes from lobbying in Congress and seeing the inaction of our politicians and the refusal to say, to take action. The, like, for example, Paul Ryan refusing to take any action to allow a vote on universal background checks. And I get so depressed when I go there. But then I go to, like, different parts of D.C., like Ward 8, and different areas where I meet with people like Zion Kelly, who spoke at the march, whose brother was killed on the way, to, on the way back from school from college prep class. And I see the strength and resilience of these communities and the love and compassion within them and how they strive every day to fight through this gun violence and really work to save each other and that's what gives me hope and that's how I know we're going to change the future. What about for you Lauren? You lost four very close friends. How are you doing? I'm doing good but something I talk about a lot in the book is I know for me and David and all of our friends activism has kind of become our therapy. Hmm. For some reason it's one of the best ways that I have found I've began to heal and something that I like to remind a lot of people also is that while we're on our Road to Change tour, being around our friends in March for Our Lives, we've become a family. And it's something that I've never really experienced outside of my own family, but we've gained this bond that none of us should have had. But I think it's the shared common experience that brings us so close together. What, 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 what's your level, both of you, what's your level, what's your thinking about the fact that the level of gun violence uh, has reduced, in a way, the sense of shock about it within this country? and you're dealing with it, you've dealt with it, as very few people have dealt with it, uh, and yet city by city, the sense of shock with mass murders, school shootings, it's there for an hour or two when it's on TV, maybe half a day, and then we move on. Honestly, I think a lot of it may come down to the way the media covers these tragedies, especially in communities of color and lower socioeconomic status. They just say it's gang violence a lot of the time and like it can't be covered. Like Zion's brother, Zaire Kelly, who was murdered in D.C., he was walking home from college prep class and was shot and killed 300 feet from his home. But you know how that was covered by the news? As gang violence. In America, if you live on a block that has a gang on it, the media automatically assumes you're part of that gang, even if you're not. And a lot of the time, when you're out there and you're just trying to make your community better and then it gets covered like that, people see it as hopeless and that you can't do anything. But on Friday night, when I saw what they do every Friday in D on the south side of D.C. at St. Sabinus Church. Chicago. Uh, sorry, Chicago. Um, where they march for peace every Friday night. 
that's what gives me hope and those people in these communities that we've gone through from Ferguson to DC to Chicago it's how I know this is going to change and I think that's kind of what this book shows too I think America needs to learn about empathy you got to put yourself in the people's shoes of the they lost people the people that die every day on America are people that that are just like you and me they're kids that were just like everybody here was at one time and their kids just like yours and somebody has to live with that suffering and never be able to talk to them for the rest of their life and that's why we wrote this book to practice empathy well thank you so much uh, both of you um, for continuing to fight for what is right I know you've had doors slammed on you uh, by members uh, of Congress in Washington and I, I know it's been a very very difficult experience just trying to get your message across let alone everything else so we appreciate it you're always welcome here um, final thoughts this morning. Mike Barnacle, I'll start with you. Well, you know, t to their point, uh, we are living in a country today for the first time in my lifetime where we have a president of the United States who seeks actively on a daily basis to divide us rather than bring the country together. And it's incredibly troubling, incredibly depressing to think that we live with this each and every day. And Willie. Despite all the outrage we're seeing on TV, despite all of the outrage we share, this is an issue, I'll say again, the president does not mind. He doesn't mind this fight because he thinks it helps him win in 2018. He believes he was elected on the immigration issue. He feels it's a wedge issue like NFL players kneeling for the national anthem. This is a fight he's happy to have. Well, and, and we know that about him. I mean, there are some truths that uh, we have been able to deduce in almost a year and a half of covering this presidency and also in the run-up to uh, the election. Um, there are, and I will say this carefully, tendencies to be racist, or he could, you could say racist, um, bigoted tendencies, sexist tendencies, um, a racist, a sexist, a bigot. That's at the top. And then the question is what's happening around the top? and how does our democracy function? Um, we're expecting others to step up. Tomorrow on the show, we're gonna do our best to look for solutions, to talk about solutions, to talk about what people can do. If people don't believe babies should be separate for, separated from their mothers, uh, watch our show tomorrow morning. We'll talk about what you can do, who you can call. We'll talk about what legal aid organizations can do, what doctors can do, what members of Congress can do. We will pressure this president to pull back on this policy. That does it for us this morning. Stephanie Rule picks up the coverage live from McAllen, Texas, right now. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.